Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the applications of sets. When we talk about sets, really what we've talked about so far is sets of numbers, like whole numbers, natural numbers, etc., etc. The real application of sets, for those of you who aren't mathematicians, is to talk about groups of people or sets of people who like to do certain things. The most common instance of this is if we were to take a survey. And when we take a survey, we're asking specific questions in order to group people into specific areas. And so let's look at a couple of counting problems and help us figure out how we can use sets and Venn diagrams to model data. In example one, a movie company is making plans for future movies it wishes to produce. The company has done a random survey of 1,000 people. The results are shown in the survey below. Here are the results. 695 people like action adventure movies, 340 like comedies, and 180 like both. It wouldn't be that difficult, except we have that little overlap part where they like both. Does that mean that it's 695 plus the overlap? Does it mean that it's 695 before we consider the overlap? I think the best way to figure this thing out is to take a Venn diagram and see what it actually means. They've asked us a, they've asked us a couple of questions, like action. how many like actions, like adv action adventures but not comedies? How many like comedies but not action adventures? How many do not like either of these types of movies? Okay, when we consider all of these questions, let's model this data in a Venn diagram first so that we can see what we're actually looking at. As always, we start out with a rectangle that represents our 1,000 people. That's everybody. So that's our universal set. And let's think about how many circles we're actually going to have. We're actually consider, considering only two things, right? Action adventures or comedies. And so our Venn diagram is only going to have two circles. Let's think about this for a second. In general, when I'm working with surveys like this and I'm trying to make a Venn diagram from it, I want to work from the most specific group out to the most general group. What I mean by that is this. If someone fits into multiple categories, that's very specific. If you're the type of person who likes this and this and this and this, you have a very, a very specific set of circumstances because you have to fit into all different kinds of categories. And so when I have a Venn diagram with two regions, I really want to consider that middle part first. And so when I look at that middle part, I know that in that middle part, I've got 180 people because those are the people that like both A and B. I guess I could label these. And so now I think it becomes a little bit clearer what we're actually looking at. If there are 695 people in circle A, there's 180 of them that are tucked into this middle part. And so to figure out the remainder, I'm going to subtract 180. When I go ahead and do that, I end up with the part that's out here that's not in the shared portion. And that's going to be 515. So together you can see the people that like action and adventure are everybody in A and that's going to add up to 695. In circle B, we're considering the people who like comedies. Well, if I've got this 180 portion here that is shared, I've got 340 minus 180 and that gives me 160 people left over. Let's look at this for a second. Consider the circle A. In A, I'm going to check my work. Do those two values together add up to 695? Yes, because technically all of those people like action adventure, though some of them like comedies. In B, does the, does the total circle of B add up to 340? It does. Even though some of them like both, they both technically like comedies. How many people like action adventures but not comedies? That would be the portion of people who just like the action adventure and it's not in here. So this is going to be 515. What about people that like comedies but not action adventures? That means they're not in that shared portion. So this is going to be 160. 
How many people don't like either of these types of movies? In order to do this, we really need to take the total of what's already represented in our Venn diagram. We have 515, 180, and 160. When I add these three values up, I'm going to get my total for the number of people who like either comedies or action-adventure or both. I'm going to pull out my calculator here. 515 plus 180 plus 160 gives me 855. How many people were surveyed? 1,000. So I've got 1,000 minus 855. That gives me a total of 145 people outside of the survey. Well, not really outside the survey. Outside the realm of action, adventure, or comedy, or both. And so all of the numbers inside my box here, my universal set, add up to 1,000. So that's kind of how this works. Let's do another example. Here's another survey. An athletic director of a school surveyed 200 students. The results of this survey are shown below. 140 like volleyball, 120 like basketball, 85 like both. Let's draw up a solution box like we did in the first example with the movies and see what we've got. Notice, I have, once again, two choices, though in the next example we will have three. And so I've got two big circles here that overlap in the middle. Let's consider for a moment the number of people that like volleyball is 140. But of those, remember, we're going to define the most specific ones first, those who like both. And in the middle, we, we have 85, because that's the number of people that are shared between the two groups. So if I'm going to try to figure out this part here that like just volleyball, not both, I need to subtract the part that is shared by both of them. So 140 minus 85. If I subtract 140 minus 85, I end up with 55 people who like just volleyball. What about people that just like basketball? Well, once again, because I have that shared portion, I have 120 minus 85, and that's going to give me 35, 55, let's see, uh, 120 minus 85, 35 people. Check your work. See if it works out. The number of people in A should add up to 140 because those are the people that like volleyball, regardless of whether they like basketball or not. The number of people who like volleyball should be 140. Is 55 plus 85 equal to 140? Yes, it is. What about in circle B? These are the people that like basketball. There should be 120 of them, regardless of whether they like volleyball or not. Is 85 plus 35 equal to 120? Absolutely it is. So now we have a representation of people who just like volleyball, people who like just basketball, people who are interested in both. How many people does that represent, though? Remember, we have 200 students who have taken the survey. So if I add up what's represented in the Venn diagram so far, 55 plus 85 plus 35, I end up with a total of 140 plus 35, which is 175. And so there's 175 people represented here. Well, my total was 200. So let's figure out how many people are outside of those two possibilities? There's going to be 25 people who, in the survey, didn't indicate, for, for whatever reason, that they liked volleyball or basketball or both. So that's kind of how this works. You go from the most specific, the people that fit into the most groups, outward from there. That's going to be important when we start to talk about Venn diagrams with three circles. Because when we talk about Venn diagrams with three circles, we have so many more things to consider. I mean, look at what this Venn diagram looks like. If I'm going to draw out this solution box, I need to make it nice and large because it's going to be pretty complicated. I have three circles. And when I draw those three circles, look at what happens. I have this very, very, very specific group here in the middle that fits into all three categories. 
And then I have three regions that fit into two categories, all of which are outlined specifically. And then I have three regions that are outlined by people who have a less specific classification. And of course, I have the box of the leftover people that don't fit into any of the groups. So when I give you a ton of information like this, it can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming because it's saying there are some people who fit into just this category, but then there's some that overlap in these, and there's some that overlap in all three. And so what I'm encouraging you to do is to go to the very middle and figure out how many people fit into that most specific category. How many people fall under the auspices of that middle category into all three? And we're going to subtract from there. 160 of in this music survey, like all three. And so the 160 fit into all three categories. If I move outward from there, let's notice. I'm going to move to these smaller categories here, smaller than the larger circle themselves. And let's go ahead and label these. I'll label this one rap. I'll label this one heavy metal. And I'll label this one rock. Let's think about this for a minute. If I have rap and heavy metal overlapping, well, rap and heavy metal overlap to form this, like, pointed region here that has 160 and then this empty part here. Well, rap and heavy metal have 190 people in them, or in it. There's 190 people in rap and heavy metal. Well, if you think about how many people are already represented, how many people already fit into this category? Well, rap and heavy metal, the 190, I need to do 190, minus 160 gives me 30. See, there's 30 people left because rap and heavy metal overlap to form this region that looks like a sideways cat eye or something. Well, there's 190 people in there. 160 of them just happen to fit in the more specific category. Let's do the same thing for heavy metal and rock. Heavy metal and rock, there's 245. So I'm looking at this area here, the sideways cat eye. Heavy metal and rock, there's 245. Well, 160 of them are already represented. If I say 245 minus 160, I get 85. Well, 85 of them don't necessarily like all three, but they still like heavy metal and rock. Let's do the same thing for rap and rock. There's 280 that like rap and rock, 160 that like all three. So that leaves me with... 120 left over for this part here. How how does this how does this fit into everything else? If we take the total number of people who like rap, and we subtract what is already represented. That's going to give me the total for this area that's left over. And so 320 like rap. But how many of those people are already represented by some other classification? Let's look. Well, these people like rap. They just happen to like heavy metal also. And so do the people who like all three. And so do the people who like rap and rock. So when I subtract the total number of people who like rap, subtract from that the people who are already represented, that's 190, 310. There's only 10 people left who like just rap. Think about it, guys. I've got 10 plus 30 is 40 plus 160 is 200 plus 120 is 320. So now the circle represents everybody that likes rap. 320. Let's do it again for heavy metal. Heavy metal. Heavy metal has 295 people. And I'm going to subtract what's already represented. That's 30. That's 160. And that's 85. When I add those up, I get 190, 275. So 295 minus 275 gives me 20 people left in the heavy metal category.
Let's do the rock category. In rock, let me scroll back up, 395 like rock. So that's 395 people minus 120 plus 160 plus 85. You see, everybody that's already been accounted for in those categories gets subtracted from the total, and whatever's left over gives me how many people are left. So that's 395 minus, let's see, 280 plus 85 is 365. So there's 30 left. <clears throat> this is good. This is good because we moved from the inner, most specific category that encompassed the people who liked all of them, moved out, and moved out. And so inside the survey, we have everybody represented. How many people like exactly, like exactly two of the three types of music? Exactly two, not three. So that would be the people who are in these overlapping categories. That would be 30 plus 85 plus 120. That's going to give me, let's see, 205, 235, because those are the people who like just these that are representing two types. How many people like only rock music? Well, only rock music is going to be 30, because they don't like heavy metal, they don't like rap, and they certainly don't like both of those along with rock. They're the people who just like rock. How many people like only one of the three types of music? Well, that's going to be 10 plus 20 plus 30. And that's going to be equal to 60. Venn diagrams. This is bailing us out. It's a visual representation of this data that's going to give us a better idea of where people fit into these categories. So I'm going to encourage you to do this cruise survey example on your own. Try it. Move from the inside out. Start with this one, then move to the ones where people like two things. Move from the inside out. Try it. See what you can do, and we'll see you next time.